Well, this morning, uh, we are going to look at the idea of what it means to bless other people. And one of the best books that I have come across in this idea of blessing other people is this book called The Blessing, Giving the Gift of Unconditional Love and Acceptance. It's by John Trent and Gary Smalley. Uh, this book is actually uh, very precious and meaningful to me because in my master's degree at Lancaster Bible College and seminary, uh, I had John Trent for a class. And uh, his, uh, his attitude, his love for speaking into people's lives, his desire to see people understand how God has uh, designed them and uniquely made them, as well as their, his desire to see people grow in Jesus and then impart that love to other people, uh, is just contagious both in his teaching and in this co-authored book. So if you want a book on what it means to bless others, or if you thought, what does it truly mean to bless others, I would highly encourage getting a copy of this. In fact, uh, this morning, most of what I said say is coming from this book. So if you think, hey, that's a good thought, more than likely it's not mine, Okay. Um, it's from the book. And just because it's, it's so rich in its idea of what it means to bless that I can't really improve much upon it. So I want to start uh, with us in just the regards to this, this thought. I think a lot of us, um, whether we think it or not, whether we admit to it or not, uh, whether we desire, desire to think about this or not, truly desire to be loved and accepted and blessed by people around us especially those who are closest to us, which is often our parents or our family members. And uh, we live in a world where sometimes or often that blessing doesn't happen. That gift of them speaking into our lives or telling us what uh, they mean to us or what we mean to them so often just doesn't happen. So there's just something special um, about the desire to be blessed. And in fact, the Old Testament speaks in numerous places about what it means to bless other people. Uh, this book likens blessing to the idea of a flower that grows. And this is what uh, the authors say. It says, A flower cannot grow unless it has the necessary elements of life. And this is a simplistic view, but I think it works. Every flower needs soil, air, water, light, and a secure place to grow, one where its roots are not going to constantly be disturbed or pulled out. And when these five basic ingredients are present, it's almost impossible to keep the flower from growing. The same thing is true of the basic elements of a blessing. Like the flower's basic needs, a blessing has five key elements to it. And when these elements are in place and they're blended together, a personal acceptance has room to blossom and grow in the home in which you live or in the environment in which you live. Each individual, uh, in each individual part of this five Part formula provides a unique contribution uh, that is needed for a blessing to happen. And so we're going to look at five elements of what it means to bless other people. And here's the first one. The first element is appropriate, meaningful touch. Now, I don't want to spend a bunch of time on this element because I think Drex did an amazing job talking about physical touch, the important physical touch in our lives just two weeks ago. So if you weren't here to hear him or you haven't watched that online, I would highly recommend you listening to that and hearing what he has to say about the importance of us actually touching each other. Uh, but in the Bible, this is a, always a part of blessing. Uh, let's just put it this way. Whether you like to be touched or not, because there's some people who just kind of more standish off, standoffish with that, or whether you're a person whose one of primary love languages is physical touch and you want it all the time, we all absolutely need physical touch. And in order to actually bless somebody, it's a needed ingredient in that process. For instance, um, in Genesis 27, 25 to 27, where Isaac, he uses touch to, to bless. This is where it says, it says, Then he said, My son, give me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. And Jacob brought to him and he ate and he brought some wine and he drank. And then his father Isaac said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. And he went up and he kissed him. And so for this process to start for Isaac to bless his son, it started with a physical touch. It started with a kiss. And so you can easily see the importance of this kiss or this physical touch to bless in this passage. Another passage, Genesis 48, 9 through 10, and then also verse 14, says the following. This is Jacob, also known as Israel, and what he did to bless his family. It says, uh, they are the sons God has given to me, Joseph said to his father. And then Israel said, bring them to me so I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes were failing because of old age, and he could hardly see. So Joseph brought his sons close to him, and his father kissed them and embraced them. 
Verse 14, but Israel reached out his right hand and put it on Ephraim's head, uh, though he was the younger, and crossed his arms, and he put his left hand on Manasseh's head, even though Manasseh was the firstborn. And this is a really interesting passage because in this passage, you have multiple physical touches happening, a kiss, an embrace, a hug, uh, as well as uh, even the way that Jacob, Israel, is even blessing his grandchildren, crossing his hands to bless them differently than the order that they should have been blessed. And there's a whole significance into that, and we can look into that at some other time. But every single part of this touch had a meaning behind it as all part of blessing these children, these grandchildren. Jesus also uh, conveyed blessing through touch. You're familiar with Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 14 and verse 16. It says, People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. And when Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Uh, Drex talked about this passage, but the part of it that sometimes is missed isn't just that he put their hands on them, but he blessed them. And he used that as part of the blessing. See, these Old and these New Testament passages, these aren't just isolated events in several different passages. Each time a blessing is given in Scripture, there is meaningful touch given. And it's there to provide a caring background for the words that are about to follow that meaningful touch. So the kissing, the hugging, the laying on of hands, they're all part of bestowing a blessing on the people in which it's supposed to be blessed. So that's number one. Number two. Some of us have maybe grown up receiving some or, or reciting some clever little sayings like maybe early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. You got that one. A bird in a hand is worth two in a bush. Let's see if anybody knows this one. And a stitch in time saves nine. Okay, so we got that down. So these are some wise sayings. The younger crowds are going to be like, what, what are you talking about? Um, but these are some wise sayings. From some of your wiser people here, young people, listen to these. But you know, there's one, there's one wise saying that we say that's an absolute lie. And here it is. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Boy, isn't that a lie? Isn't that a lie? Yes, sticks and stones will break your bones, but boy, the words do hurt. And here's the issue is words do hurt us. And so the second of these fifth blessings or the idea of blessing is a spoken message. Now, obviously, you want to say something if you're blessing somebody. Abraham spoke his, his, his blessing to his, his son Isaac. Isaac spoke a blessing to his son Jacob. Jacob gave a verbal blessing to each of his 12 sons and two of his grandchildren. Esau, when he was excited to finally receive a blessing from his dad, after years and years and years of waiting, came to his dad and was devastated when there was no blessing for him to hear. This was important stuff. And so when uh, when God blessed us with the gift of his son, what was it? It was the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Why? So Jesus could walk among us and speak to us and bless us. That's in John 1.14. God has always been a God of the spoken word. In fact, in Scripture, a blessing is not a blessing unless it is spoken. Words are so powerful, uh, and this is why I think Solomon says these following things in Scripture. Uh, Proverbs 18.21, the tongue has the power of life and death. Now think about that for a second. It really does. You can speak life into people, or you can speak death into people. Because those words do hurt, or they do heal, and they bring blessing. Proverbs 3, 27 to 28, do not withhold good from those who deserve it. When it is in your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow when you now have it with you. And there's this idea that if you have the ability to speak blessing, then speak blessing. And if you have the ability to do it now, then why wait? Do it now. Do it in a timely fashion. The issue is that we so often neglect the idea of speaking blessing upon other people into their lives. And I think there's several reasons that the book lays out for us of why we withhold these blessings. And these are in different contexts to different people, so maybe kind of put yourself into that context. Maybe as a parent, you've thought, I don't want to speak blessing or speak too much to my child because I don't want to inflate my child's ego. I'm concerned about them getting proud 
If I say too much about how good they are about things, it's going to go to their head, and that's the end of that. And so we withhold. Or maybe an employer says to an employee, I'm afraid if I praise them, they'll take advantage of me and won't finish their work. And so they kind of hold back the praise, but actually maybe if they got praise, they would do a better job. Uh, A husband might say to a wife, communication is too much like work. I work all day. Then she expects me to work all night talking to her. (laughs) That's kind of sad, but maybe it's the case. Maybe you wouldn't say that out loud or there wouldn't be. But um, maybe this is for anybody. I just don't know what to say. I've heard that. I don't know what to tell them. just don't know. Or they know I love them without me having to say it. Do they? Do they really? If I get started, I'll have to make a habit of it. What are you whining about? That's a great thing. Make a great habit of telling people how, bless, you know, how much you love them. Or telling children their good point is like putting on perfume. A little is okay, but too much and it stinks. And that can be true. And so you're afraid, I don't want to say too much because I don't want my kids to stink. I don't know if you've ever thought of these or if you've ever, ever used any of these excuses or have delayed blessing somebody because of these, but I have. And it's not right, and we have to work on doing that. See, here the issue is a spoken message is needed to bless our kids. And a blessing only becomes a blessing when it's spoken to them. If there is the spoken message that we need to bless, there needs to be something in the message that we have to say. And so there's kind of two parts. Elements three and four deal with the two parts of the spoken message. First, a spoken message should attach high value to the person in which you're blessing. Uh, To bless literally means to bow the knee. It's the idea of, of, of meaning to give all or to give someone recognition. So when you bless them, we recognize how important they are and who they are, and we attach great worth to the person and who they are as a person. When you bless someone, you add to them. Similarly, when you curse someone, it, it doesn't mean, it, it means you take away from them. And what's interesting is sometimes we're actually cursing people when we're not even intentionally cursing them or unintentionally cursing them. We're cursing them because we're actually withholding blessing them, if that makes sense. So sometimes we have a word that we should speak into somebody's life, and just by withholding it, we're actually cursing that individual. The idea of adding value or weight to somebody is actually the idea of giving somebody a coin. In biblical times, coins were made of copper, bronze, silver, and gold, and uh, they weren't minted like they are today. Uh, they, the, the weights were inconsistent, and so often uh, the weight of the coin made it more valuable or less valuable based upon how much precious metal was in that particular coin. And so this is why the Bible talks so much, especially through the Old Testament, about having accurate weights and measurements, as to not con people, as not to deceive people. And that was also true of grain and other things, because they used those as money. So the weight made a difference, because the more weight, the more value. This isn't so in today's world. You can grab a dollar bill out of your wallet, and it weighs the same as a $100 bill, but there's a $100 difference. You can grab a penny out of your wallet and a dime, and your penny weighs more and it's larger, but your dime's worth 10, 10 times more. But this is still true in precious metals if you collect precious metals. The more weight, the more valuable. Here's the question. How much weight or value are you placing on the important people in your lives? How are you measuring them? Are you recognizing the value that each person has around you? Are they a precious metal of extreme value to you? And if so, have you told them? And how have you told them? Genesis 27, 27 to 29 gives us a glimpse of some of the the words of blessing from Isaac to Jacob. And it says the following. So he went to him and kissed him. And when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Oh, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you the heaven's dew and the earth's richness and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and people bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you, and may those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. Isaac wanted to impart some value upon his son. Later in Genesis, Judah uh, used a different word picture for each of his sons to bestow a blessing on them. Uh, the scripture says this in uh, Genesis forty nine twenty eight: All of these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them, giving each the blessing appropriate to him. Interesting. So each one of the sons 
got a different blessing appropriate to who the person was. For instance, just three of them. Judah was pictured as a lion's cub depicting strength and royalty. Naphtali was pictured as a doe let loose depicting the grace and beauty of this gentle animal and showing his artistic qualities. Joseph was pictured as a fruitful branch or a tree depicting how Joseph's unfailing trust in the Lord resulted in him providing a place of refuge and safety for his family. And so each person was picked something different for how uniquely gifted they were. So here are some ways the book suggests to show high value. Maybe one, use an object lesson. It doesn't have to be an animal like they did in the scriptures, but something that's important to the person or gets across or conveys the idea. Sometimes that object will speak more than just the words that are said. Link the object to an emotional meaning. What's the meaning behind the object or the animal or the thing that you thought about that is precious to the kid? Or if the kid has a precious thing in their life that they enjoy and you can put that into the blessing, how does that work to convey a message? And lastly, use word pictures to disarm defenses and point out their potential, just like the doe, the lion cub, um, and all of these. And it shows the beauty or the tree. Here's a good example from the Song of Solomon. In the book of Song of Solomon, Solomon's bride refers to herself rather unattractively attractively in chapter 1, verse 6. She sees that she's all sunburned, she's working hard, she doesn't look that attractive, and she thinks of herself very, very negatively. Okay? But by chapter 2, verse 1, just a short amount of time after having been near Solomon and Solomon calling into her life and speaking into her life blessing, she calls herself the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valleys. A totally different picture than not thinking of herself as attractive. What had changed? Solomon praised her by attaching high value to who she was. And all of a sudden she felt blessed and so she was blessed. Uh, that would have happened unless if Solomon would have simply said, oh, you're kind of cute. Or, hey, you kind of look pretty sunburned. You're not that attractive right now. That wouldn't have worked out pretty well for him or her. But instead he called into her and added weight of value to her. And it made such a difference in her life. In fact, this blessed relationship blossomed to the point that by chapter 7, verse 10, she says, I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. Men, can you say that about your wife? That she would look at you and say that he's my beloved, and his desire is towards me? Attach some value, and it makes a difference. Do your, do your children know that they are of extreme value to you? What about your friends? Attaching value to people is so important to bless them. The fourth element of the blessing is picturing a special future for the person you are blessing. As people today, we can't predict with biblical accuracy exactly what the future is going to be for our kids or our loved ones, right? We just can't. But here's the thing is, we, however, can encourage our kids to grow in the Lord and, and, and set the meaningful goals for them as they blossom and as they grow in life. And we can convey to them the gifts and the character and the ways that they are as a person and point that out in their life and maybe picture a special future for them based upon the uniqueness of how God has created them. We're reminded uh, by the Lord um, in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And this passage is so often misunderstood and misrepresented, especially around the graduation time. Do you not understand that Israel was in the midst of captivity, in the midst of way from, away from where they felt they were going to be blessed. And yet in the midst of that, God says, I have a hope and I have a future. There is something coming. You're going to be back in the land. Hope in that. I'm going to set a future for you even though you can't see it. I'm going to bless you even in the midst of you feeling like you're not being blessed. We're also reminded of the words of Jesus and the special future that he's preparing for us in John 14, 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me so that you may be where I am. They may say, well, what does that have to do with anything? God has pictured a special future for his children that he has blessed. And he's like, I'm going away. But I'm coming back. Why? Because I'm preparing a place for you to be with me in the future, and you're going to truly be blessed. And so we have this hope because we understand what the Lord has told us. 
Likewise, in the blessing that Isaac gave Jacob, um, we see that Isaac sensed a special future where the nations would serve Jacob, the people would bow down before him. And at that moment in his life, it had not happened. But eventually it did. So encourage those you bless with verbal words that show how God can use their giftedness and sense their uniqueness and how they can be an impact to other people and themselves in the future. And the fifth element and last element of the blessing is a genuine act of commitment or act of commitment. Words alone cannot just simply convey the blessing, but we need to back it up with our own actions, our own attitudes, and everything we do in committing to the person that we're behind them. Uh, here are just a few passages of which commitment is projected to the person. Genesis 27, 28. May God give you the heaven's dews and the earth riches and abundance of grain and new wine. It's asking God to bless and God to be active and you being a part of that. Uh, Genesis 48, 15, and 16. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my father Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys. Again, in acting God's will and God's desire upon them. Proverbs 22, 20, uh, 22, 6 is often used in regards to blessing or training kids. Train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not turn from it. And that idea of the way he should go can be translated according to his bent or according to his uniqueness. And the idea of this means is just take a personal interest in each child and bless each child uniquely based upon how God has wired them. So there's two ways to express an act of commitment, probably more, but two important ways. And one is to commit the person being blessed to the Lord, that I truly want God to bless them and God to be with them, and I will be praying for them, so I'm going to commit you to the Lord. And two, is commit our own personal lives and actions uh, to back that up to their best interest. I will be here for you to help you when you are struggling or when you need it. Part of this, spoken, uh, part of this is spoken and part of this is acting. And they're both very important. So if you want to bless others, here's five great elements in a model. One, provide appropriate, meaningful touch. Two, supply a spoken message. In that spoken message, number three, attach high value to them. Picture a special future. And then engage in a genuine, active commitment to the person. So rather than just talking about this and rather than just saying, hypothetically, this is how you can bless people, we thought we would actually do this this morning. And so what we're going to do is this morning we're going to have, uh, it's Graduate Sunday, and we want to bless our graduates. And I could just have them all come up here and speak, and some of them like, I don't want to talk. I could have them all come up here and speak and tell what they're doing, and I'm not going to do that. And I could convey a broad pastoral blessing over them, and that's all well and good. But I think more meaningful than that is having these graduates who have worked hard in their degrees, both high school and college, to come up here and have the persons that have been most important in their life, their parents, to speak into their lives a blessing. Some of them may follow the model we had. Some may not. That's okay. Um, but the desire is to do that. So we're going to have them come up, bestow a blessing upon them. And for the sake of simplicity, um, we're going to go in alphabetical order of last name. They don't have to line up that way. Um, but if uh, the graduates and their parents want to come up, we're going to have you all come up at the same time. And we're going to pass a microphone down and let you bless. You'll know. Um, you can come on up. You'll know when it's your turn based upon when your kid's slide comes up on the back, which you can also see on the front as well. Um, and I'm actually going to start off. I'm going to start off to kind of break the ice a little bit. Um, Sharon, you can just stand right. Yeah, I guess you can come up on stage if you want. That's great. Um, Sharon and Steve Huggen Dubler could not be here this morning, um, and their son Matt graduated from college and has moved to Denver. But they want to convey a blessing from Scripture. And so I'll start off just by reading the scripture passage that they asked uh, us to read as far as a blessing for them. So Psalm 37, 3 to 6. This is for you, Matt, from your parents. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be blessed, Matt. So we are going to start off with the Jacksons, correct? 
Hello, good morning. I'm Miranda Jackson. My husband's working today or he would be here with us. This is our graduate, Ashlyn Jackson. Um, she's the baby of the family, our second child and our only daughter. Um, so we were really happy to see graduation come. Um, Ashlyn's not a big fan of school. Um, she was happy to see it end. Um, her um, attendance and tardiness would show. <laughs> All right, so our prayer for you is that you would look to God for wisdom and direction. Do not conform to this world. God has a great purpose for your life. Find your identity in Christ. It's guaranteed that people will fail you in this life. So remember to offer grace and forgiveness often. Your hope and peace will only be found in Christ alone. Whatever you do, do for the glory of God. I think of Barb Sabin often. She would use a phrase, bloom where you're planted. Um, I thought of that when I was preparing this for Ashlyn. Um, whatever path God puts you on, um, whether work or school, give it your all so that others can see Jesus through you. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Um, bless those... <laughs> Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. We pray that you would have a heart to obey God, God's word, and a desire to make right choices. We pray for protection from this wicked world and that he would fill you with courage and strength. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. We love you and are so proud of you. We're thankful that God entrusted us to take care of you, and we commit you into his hands. All right. uh, this is, my name's Stephanie, and this is Denver. He graduated this year, and this is a very bittersweet moment for us because Denver was sick for a long time, and when I was pregnant, I was told my son would never walk or talk or do much of anything. So we are so very proud of Denver. And this is a very, very special moment. Um, Denver has been a blessing in our lives. He has brought us much joy and happiness. We grew closer to God with the birth of Denver as Denver was born very sick. We learned to pray and trust and have lots of patience. Throughout his life, I prayed that Denver would grow up and dis discover God's will, guidance, and direction for him in his life and that he would be a product of society. I also prayed for love and kindness in his heart, and so far, God has been faithful. Now this is where I have to let go and trust God completely with Denver's future. I pray that God uses Denver's gifts of kindness, generosity, and the ability to make people feel accepted and important as a blessing to others. Our family will continue to pray, support, and encourage you in your life. We love you, and remember, do not fear. Um, my Bible verse for Denver, because I think he feels very uncertain about what he's going to do and fearful, is um, Isaiah 41, verse 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And we are just so, so thankful for Denver and that he is where he is at today by the miracle of God is why he's standing up here, and I'm very thankful for that. Hello, I'm Mark Knepp. I'm the father of Madeline. I'm very proud of her. Um, I know the beginning of school program was very difficult. Um, you know, they weed out the students who aren't going to make it, but uh, I'm so proud of her. She hung in there. She did what she had to do to uh, get through, and I know her faith had a big part of that. And I just pray that she continues to be the girl she is, the woman that she is now. Um, keep your faith. Uh, I don't have a specific Bible verse, but um, I just know that uh, you're going to do fine. I love you. Yeah, I would just add that you have all the tools, that, that um, God has given you all the tools that you need to be successful, as you have it in the past. You have a light in your eyes and in your heart that Jesus has given you, and just carry that with you. 
he will um, guide you and protect you. And um, you've, been a, you've been a blessing to us. And I know in your career as a nurse, you'll be a blessing to others. And um, you know, we'll always be here for you. If uh, you ever need us, we'll uh, be here all the way for you. So we do thank God for you. And we're just um, anxious to see what he has for you in the future. Oh, it's, it's just one other thing. Madeline, we de she was dedicated by Pastor Doug in this church. She was about this big. So full circle. Isn't that, isn't that great to see that? It's great. All righty, guys. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Darren, and this is my wife, Judith, and this is our son, David. Um, we're very proud of him. And uh, well, I'm, I'm going to just say some words of uh, complimentary words about him. Uh, and then my wife will, will pray for him. Um, either, I'm not sure how she's going to do it, but uh, we'll see. It'll be a surprise to all of us. Um, so, David, I just want to tell you, you are a gifted child. Um, you are one of the most intelligent people I know. You're a natural leader, and you are dependable and committed to the groups you lead. You are socially aware, and you know what to say and what not to say, when to speak and when not to. Um, you are a good friend, and your friends find you hilarious, and they, they like to be around you. Uh, my fellow teachers like you, too, um, and they were all telling me, I mean, everybody was telling me at the end of the year, uh, you must be so proud, uh, and, and I am. Uh, your mother and I are, are glad that you're, you'll be going to Penn State and will not be too far away because we love you and we will miss you. Um, we can't wait to see what you do next. And we pray that the Lord bless you at Penn State and continue to show you his favor. Love you, son. Lord, I thank you for um, the wonderful child you blessed us with. I thank you that when he was born, uh, it was a very beautiful child and... Um, uh, knew that he was uh, specially named by you, beloved. And so we pray that um, as David goes forward um, with his many gifts and talents, that above all, he would know that he is deeply loved, um, not just by his family and his friends, um, but ultimately uh, that he would begin to grasp the depths of your love for him. And that that knowledge would guide his path, that it would shape his heart, and that it would um, mold him into a man whose heart is, um, follows hard after you. We pray that you would protect him um, and that you would use his gifts for your glory. We pray that he would have a vision of the world that is like yours, that he would see people as you see them. Um, that he would understand uh, through the shouts and the noise of the world that he would be able to hear and understand the whisper of your love. Um, so we commend him to you, asking that you would enable David to put his hand in yours and to walk the rest of his life in your company and grow closer and closer to you and that you would use um, all of his many gifts, Father, to make the world a brighter and better place and to bring you glory. And that in that he would find his ultimate peace and joy. In Jesus' name. Hi, I'm Darren Yoder, uh, the second Darren up here, I guess. And my wife, Deb and our graduate, Madison. And she's wondering, I think, why I have this picture uh, with me this morning. That'll be explained further. But I wish you could have seen a look on her face as I walked in with this, thinking, what are you doing? Um, when Maddie was 10, her grandma gifted her um, and Brayden and their cousins with this framed reminder, They're, they were all unique to them um, of how special they are to God, how much he loves them. So Maddie, over the years, I don't know if you've known this, but I've used 
this picture uh, to just pray scripture over you. So I just wanted to do that this morning. I pray that you would be um, confident in Christ alone and not yourself, that you would trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him so that he can make your path straight. That's from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, that you would continue to live in him, to be rooted and built up in him, strengthened in your faith as you can't read my writing, which I thought would be a problem. <laughs> Anyways, the verse is from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. You're precious, for you are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you to do. That's Ephesians 2.10. And Maddie, you are loved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's from John 3.16. You are safe. God is your refuge and strength, ever-present help in times of trouble. Psalms 46.1. You are beautiful. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. He made male and female, he created them. Genesis 1.27. For Maddie, God created your inmost being. He knit you together in my womb. Oh, that you will praise him because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God's works are wonderful, and I pray that you know that full well from Psalm 139. Um, it's exciting for me to see my kids uh, growing into adulthood. Uh, that being said, it's also very scary because um, they're adults and it's their choices now. And uh, it is a scary world out there. But uh, Maddie, we love you. Uh, we're excited to see, you know, the God or the path that God has for you and where that takes you. Um, we know you're not, uh, you're not sure at this time what you're going to do. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine. You'll figure it out. So we're proud of uh, the young lady you become. And we love you. And I'm just going to pray for her now. Father, thank you for your love and blessing in Maddie's life. We ask for guidance in her life as she decides what path to take. We pray that you would open the right doors for her life and close the wrong ones and protect her from those she needs to walk away from. Give Maddie a heart of wisdom to hear your voice as we ask for your blessing over her life. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to hand out some cards to them quickly, and then in the midst of that, I want to recognize a few um, individuals that couldn't be here today or did not get us profiles. Um, Sydney is one of them. Uh, they were unavailable to be here. There you go, Ashley. Uh, today, and didn't be able to get us a, a blessing, but um, I'm hoping and knowing that they're going to bless in their own ways. Madeline, congratulations. David, congratulations. And Madison, I usually call you Maddie. There it is. Um, also connected to our church is Tobin Herbertson. He, uh, he's involved with our senior high hangouts and sometimes our youth events. And uh, Taryn Ferguson um, is also involved, and she uh, graduated, I believe, as well, correct? So, yeah. So we have some additional ones that are in the bulletin, and you can check them out. But um, give them a round of applause. For all of their, uh, all of their high achievements. And I'm going to pray for them. And when I'm done praying for them, we're going to do something a little different. Not that this is already not different, but we're going to do something different. We're going to have you guys, parents and, and children, all come down to the bottom so the worship team can come up. And we're going to sing the song, The Blessing. And I ask if you desire to, to make your way to the front, put your hands on them and bless them as we sing this song. It could be a beautiful moment of, of blessing uh, these graduates. So let me pray for us as you guys make your way down. 
and as the band makes its way up to the stage. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your goodness. We are so grateful for the gifts and the abilities and the talents you have imparted upon these graduates. And Lord, we know they're loved by you. And it was so beautiful to hear the love and the blessings poured upon them by their parents as well. And so, Lord, as we just lay one less blessing on them through song and through uh, the laying on of hands onto them, may they know um, how valuable they are. May they understand that you have a ridiculously better future than they can even think or imagine available for them. And, Lord, um, may they know that us as a church and individuals are committed to their good. We thank you for each one of them. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.